everybody. I am Fitz Kohler and I am so excited today because I have, I think, one of planet Earth's favorite people joining me. She is the sunshine. You think I'm happy? No, this girl beats me by leaps and bounds. I'm talking about Emma Watkins or Emma Wiggle from the Wiggles. And as many of you know, I have a long history with the Wiggles. I believe I started working with them about I don't know, 12 years ago. And it certainly is one of the highlights of my career because they were uh, just such joy within my home, helping me raise my kids, teaching them the alphabet and how to dance and the joy of singing and the joy of movement. And, you know, the original crew, Anthony and Murray and Greg and Jeff and Captain Feathersword, of course. And so I got to work with them, but as many of you know, about 10, 12 years ago, they transitioned. There was a few retirements and we brought in Simon Lockie and Emma Wiggle, and they also were super fun to work with. So this is the beauty of Emma. I mean, there's a, there's a ton of wonderful things about Emma, but for children, she's, uh, she's that Disney princess brought to life. She's the real deal. She's a real person. And it's somebody that our girls and our boys can look up to and enjoy. And she's just so lovely. So I'm going to shush up and I'm going to bring her on. And she's all decked out. I'm so excited. Here she comes. Hello. Hello. <laughs> You're so sweet, Fitz. But if, if, if the sunshine is part of this, I can be the sun, but you're the rainbow. I love your shirt. Oh, it is very colorful, right? I actually, you know how they say women dress for other women? Yeah. I thought I have to wear something bright and cheery for Emma. And that's why I've worn my whole costume for you today. Oh my gosh. And wow, it's so fun. You're so cute. It just, oh, you, yeah, I could gush forever. So um, I want to go back to, I think it's 2012, where you were a wiggle in training and we worked together in Jacksonville. I came and did some wiggly stories and anybody can go on to my YouTube channel and just, or just Google Fitness and Emma Wiggle or the Wiggles and you'll find it. But things have changed for you. So tell me where you were, where you are now. Oh, I feel like looking back at those photos, we were so young. And it was such a different time. We hadn't even become fully fledged Wiggles yet. We were Wiggles in training. I remember meeting you and being so inspired by your energy. And I just thought, well, this is lovely. Is this what it's going to be like meeting everyone? All right, we were warned she might freeze, but she always comes back. So hang tight with us. Emma's got, at least she's frozen. This, I'm so sorry, I apologize. Our internet here is very interesting. Uh, but what I remember was how wonderful it was to be in North America touring and getting a chance to meet you and do this interview on stage and we filmed different kinds of um, workouts, mainly inspired with Anthony because you knew Anthony before we came along um, naturally and because he's got such an infatuation with fitness and health and so it was a it was definitely I think I was just in shock was I quiet was I quiet I, you know what I just remember thinking you were lovely you were friendly <laughs> and you talked about the hula hoop and it was great <laughs> See, I, <can> miss it. <laughs> I don't I wasn't um aware of how physical the role would be and particularly, you know, as my dance training started to kick in and we included a lot more different dance elements into the show, I think I started to realise how important it was to be healthy and look after myself in order for the show to continue and so that we could be the best that we could possibly be for the audience. And that didn't really hit me until a few years later. So uh, there's, there's visible proof that you have changed your lifestyle because even though you were adorable and fit and be beautiful back then you've become very spelt and, and you're you're a professional dancer you know and you're, you're you have a much more sophisticated appearance now and you've been in vogue magazine and you really have changed and you've become this 
glamour glamazon i don't know what are, what are we calling you now it's you're very you're you you have the perfect role for a child's entertainer but then you've really transitioned into this very sleek sophisticated woman it's it's been very impressive tell us tell us how you did that thank you i I guess um, I do feel myself and the most natural dress like this. <laughs> this feels very normal to me. And uh, I had a terrible um, moment when I was diagnosed with endometriosis. And this was about four years ago now. And at that particular time, I probably didn't realize what I was doing in terms of my diet and my fitness to uh, encourage inflammation in my body and I wasn't really truly aware and I didn't actually put the dots together where I knew that what I was eating was affecting and my symptoms and everything and I I just didn't have a full awareness of what was going on in my body even though I'd grown up as a dancer a lot of the advice that I've been given um, particularly when I was studying dance full-time now I would probably look back at that and think wow that's a really different perspective and I wouldn't do that now but of course research changes uh, you know we educate ourselves as much as we possibly can and now I guess I'm making different choices in terms of what I'm eating and how I'm protecting my body but also I definitely think that as we get older our approach changes as well we're not 15 anymore and we don't bounce back as we normally do and after the surgery, I had a laparoscopy um, for keyhole surgery, and it really shook me up. I had never been under general anaesthetic. I didn't bounce back. I didn't pass my reflex test a few times. I wasn't myself, and I thought I was okay after a certain amount of months. But really, I, I can only really safely say I probably recovered two years later from that situation not just because of the surgery but because of the endometriosis decline as it was so you really grabbed that bull by the horns and decided to be a real vocal proponent for women getting checked for endometriosis and and addressing their issues tell me a little more about that I, you know it didn't really occur to me about the kind of impact that it would have um for women in the community and just you know on in the community in terms of the digital community, social media, and, you know, just not just in Australia, but overseas as well. Um, but for me, I just wanted to announce that I was not going to be on the tour and I wanted to be honest about it and very pragmatic <laughs> because I knew that if I didn't, people would think I was pregnant and it was actually so opposite. And so I, I think... Um, mentally for me I just couldn't I didn't want people to think that I was pregnant because I really wasn't <laughs> and I really wanted to make sure that people knew that I was going to get treatment and that I try and return as soon as I possibly could and everybody was so supportive and then I just didn't realize the kind of wave and the effect that it that it kind of started this conversation about endometriosis and awareness for the disease and then which kind of led to creating funds to do more testing and and actually support women during that process. Yeah, you know, it's uh, I, I identify with part of what you went through. I, I really didn't want to have to tell people I had breast cancer, um, but there I was thinking, all right, well, people are going to see me bald and mm -hmm. I have no choice. You know, I, I almost got backed into a corner where you know, if I would have showed up to announce the Los Angeles Marathon ball, I think people would ask questions. So um, it's interesting to have to reveal such a private part about your yourself and your health. So, um, so just to go quickly over it, and I'll, and I'll, I, I'm sure a lot of Americans don't maybe don't know that you actually married the Purple Wiggle Lottie. You had a, a, a long friendship and romance, and then. And then that marriage ended and you're still happy friends, but you know, you're a children's entertainer and then all of a sudden you had grown ups in your business. What was that like? I can imagine in Australia the celebrity paparazzi was pretty tough. It was I think people were genuinely shocked because they were so invested in us as 
people. And I guess the beauty about being a children's entertainer is that children are our audience and they're so open and honest and they have no inhibition and so they're very real. And so for parents um, watching the Wiggles on a daily basis, they feel connected to us not just as personalities, but as people. And so that's probably why the interest was so um, big initially. But people couldn't understand, you know, very first off that Lockie and I were best friends. <laughs> so it took many, many years um, of, of people being able to see us on stage and off stage actually supporting each other and encouraging each other. And now it's totally different where people are a lot more relaxed and are able to see us as we truly were from the start because we grew up as best friends we've really been on this journey together for the last 12 years and so I wouldn't be here without him and you know we we are the only two in our kind of situation that knows what a, you know what this journey has been like so look I thank Lockie for so many things and now it's so nice to see us on this new chapter in a totally different way um but yeah it just i think it just took people a bit of time to like what i'm so confused why are they so friendly <laughs> right. what? Wait, i am what and so we just knew in our hearts that that just wasn't the the kind of trajectory that we felt that it was going but we wanted to make sure that our friendship was as strong as ever and it really has been <laughs> and it is i understand that people are like i don't get it yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I I don't have any doubts that you guys are good friends because you're such decent people. And I could feel, I mean, you guys do support for each other, not just you and Lockie, but Simon and Murray yeah. and Anthony, the whole crew. Um, what a lovely group of people. I mean, it's almost, it's, I could say it would be almost annoying that <laughs> you guys are so nice. Well, you know, we're, for, we're fortunate in the fact that normally and before COVID we would tour for about 80 to 90 percent of the year so you're used to seeing each other more so than your own family and so you become a family and we are a family and so um I think what I underestimated my fellow Wiggles and all all being male I didn't know how to approach them initially about the endometriosis thing and and that was probably the only time that I really just didn't know what to say um but when I did I totally underestimated their support because as soon as I mentioned it to them they're like go like what can we do like go and you know do you need this do you need that and so I don't have that kind of anxiety about bringing something up with the wider group anymore like I did before. Now, who filled in for you while you were uh, healing? We actually, because it was very quick, by the time I got diagnosed, it was only my, maybe two weeks until I was in surgery. It was something ridiculous like that, maybe three, four weeks. And so I think naturally we would have auditioned, but we didn't have time. Okay. <laughs> so we had two beautiful women uh, a friend of Lockie's and a friend of mine. <laughs> and so because we both knew that they had done musical theatre before, they had slightly different skills, but they were more um, on the singer side, whereas my background is mostly in dance. We knew that the singing was going to be really important to try and blend in with the group. Nice. So uh, we had both of them fill in over two different tours and in like the week or two leading up, they had to learn everything. So it was pretty, um, it was a lot for them. And I can't thank them enough for, you know, carrying on the uh, the yellow uh, costume for that time. And they did it so quickly. It was um, pretty wild, uh, but we're so grateful. And it was a great chance for me to be able to relax. I couldn't I just couldn't relax because I was so worried about letting people down and I was worried about letting families down and children. And so by the time that I actually was in the hospital <laughs> and in, in like the day after, I was like, okay, now I can relax because I know that the two of them have got this. They have totally got this. So um, that brings me to an opportunity I flew. So I don't have many regrets in my life. 
I'm a girl who pretty much does what I want to do. I, I go for things, but there's there's two regrets that are on this series, kind of sad bit, and then one where I forget what show I was at, but um, Amp, I had said something about Dorothy the Dinosaur, and Anthony said, do you want to be Dorothy the Dinosaur? He offered me that opportunity, and I think I was I just froze. And you said no? I said no. <laughs> Was I there? No, it was, it was oh, early. But what was I thinking? That that was my big chance. Oh, but it's not like that opportunity hasn't gone anywhere. You know that can still yeah, that can still be a thing. I mean, you, that don't it, you you've got many many years of your life to enjoy the Wiggles. So we're not we're not going anywhere. So okay. that's all. So perhaps you could still set up the dinosaur. Put that in the back of your head and just, oh. just yeah. That would be very exciting. Okay. I do regret that. What in God's earth? Why did I say no? That would have been so much fun. But if you were asked now, you would say yes straight away, right? Yeah. You know what you want. Yeah. I would also be yeah. wagged or docked with some love and be so. Um, we just had a question pop up. I'm so sorry. Sydney, can you bring that back? We've got my producer, Sydney Summers, in the back from Sebastian Lopez. Just a quick note, I worked several years at a pre-K through fifth grade school and saw firsthand the joy the Wiggles bring to young kids, my niece and nephew included. Thank you for doing what you do. That's very sweet. It's, it is truly a joy to have children as our audience and families because the enthusiasm and the excitement is such a big part of not just the feedback, but you feel that in the live show. And it is something that we've truly missed over the last year, not being able to tour, but being there in the audience and having the children jumping as soon as the show starts, you it gives you life, it gives you energy. And so I think that's why we're just really excited to get back on tour. But in saying, sorry, sorry, no, go on, keep going. <laughs> I was just going to say, even though we haven't to it, we've tried to pivot our shows online by doing Facebook Live and YouTube Live and Instagram Live. And in a totally different way, they've been really interactive because the parents have been writing questions to us like this during the show. And then we can interact that way. And so, you just froze again. Momentary and the pause. She'll be right back. <laughs> Every time I'll have to come back in a position. <laughs> Sorry. It wasn't that important anyway, but I was just mentioning that it's been amazing online. Technical difficulties aside, that... Uh, we've been able to connect with families that are in countries that we would not normally tour to. So it gives us a chance to be interactive with those families, um, even if we're not touring that country. So that brings me to, you are um, heading out on tour in New Zealand and you are in quarantine in New Zealand, stuck in the Wiggle Jail. So tell us about Wiggle, Wiggly Prison, how's <laughs> that going? Um, we are in hotel quarantine in uh, Auckland, New Zealand. And I think even to have flown on a plane feels like a step closer. And being here has given us some time to reflect on how important the tour is to the Wiggly family. And we've caught up on a lot of work, which is good. <laughs> but, um, you know, the, the idea of actually performing live is like, it's a little bit of anxiety and anticipation all at the same time. But I guess for us, we've never really had to think about doing a performance before. Performing for the group has been very natural because it's mostly been daily for the last 10 years. So you don't, you don't really Good ever. Morning, ladies and gentlemen, listen, we've uh, just uh, successfully completed the departures for this morning. This is uh, hotel we quarantine. Have, we do have arrivals coming in soon. Good morning. Oh. This I'm so There's sorry. Those that booked for the, uh, this is what it's like. Walk, if you could briskly make your way down briskly. to the um, master area for the walk. So people, you can go outside and go for a walk. For some fresh air yeah. You have to book. Uh, before this first bus arrives from Harris Country. And this is what so happens you every day, now, please, multiple uh, times a day. You're being in jail, so do not make a This is what you'll be. You'll spend a whole lot of time. 
supporters. Oh, yes. I've actually got my yoga uh, mat. Well. Um, we'll That's what I've been doing. As best we can. I'm really sorry um, about this. Okay. <laughs> we the, uh, the coach is on its way from the airport. He, he, to he's to go back to your rooms. He's but becoming more confident here. as the days have gone on. He's been Perhaps become some sort of sporting announcer or event announcer with his excellent intercom skills. I think he's going to become a personality. He did mention earlier this morning that um, somebody had rung reception to give him feedback about being a bit quieter on the microphone, and I was actually going to ring just to tell him to step back from it a bit <laughs> because it was very um, plosive. But um, he's really changed his technique today, and this is uh, day 10. So he's really... He's really done well. Now, and, and so each of you have your own room? Yes. Yep. How many of you are there? Um, there's about 11 of us all together. That's cast and crew. 11 people in Wiggle Jail. You're all in your separate rooms. Are you allowed to see each other? So could you go hang with Simon? No, no, not really. But you can see people walking. So sometimes if we see each other, we're like, hey, over the balcony. Or sometimes you might get a text and say, I walked past, I couldn't see you. But if you were, you know, making a cup of tea, then you might not have seen them. Or you're having a nap or watching Netflix. I mean, there's quite a lot of things to do. Or doing yoga. I Is see, it? I get to see uh, Katerina, our choreographer, because we're doing... I'll turn around. This will be like a temp, this will be like a health check, but they will call back. Okay. It's hilarious. This is very fun. Um, Wiggle jail, Wiggly prison. So Katarina and I are doing online yoga with a friend of mine that lives in the UK. I'm so sorry. Hi. And so I actually see her almost every day on our yoga mat through the screen. Okay. And she, is she here with you, correct? Yeah, she's here, but the instructor is from the UK. And so we kind of see each other via UK yoga. I'm just going to hang up the phone. It's okay. done. It's done. Okay. I was going to say throw it off the hook so it doesn't ring again. So um, so how many shows do you guys have planned in New Zealand? It's about 25 shows or so, which is quite a lot. It's about two or three a day. It might even be a little bit more. And we're, we've got 12 show days. So, yeah, maybe 25 shows. We're so looking forward to being here. It's such a beautiful place it's a beautiful countryside beautiful people and i think really for us being here is just that first step closer to getting to tour the rest of the world we miss everybody in north america canada the uk it just feels like ages since we've seen you it has been ages it has been well florida is open for business just right. florida yes our governor has he, he likes freedom and he's treating us like grown-ups, and he says, you all can be responsible for you. So we hosted the Super Bowl here. We have lots of sports um, events going on in Florida, and, yeah, so we would definitely welcome a weekly party here in Florida. We would be happy for a weekly party, and as long as the children are safe, we are very happy. Okay, so we got another question. Josh Devlin, are you allowed to collect the roses for Dorothy Bones for WAG? Um, and signs during the show. I guess that's a, a COVID-related question. And it's a good question, Josh, because normally in the Wiggle Show for the last 29 years, that has definitely been the case where either the Wiggles or the Wiggly dancers will go out and collect things from the audience. And it's so nice to see families leading up to the show with their children, encouraging them to make craft. Um, we have so many different signs and cards and it is sometimes quite overwhelming how many things are made for the show. Particularly in North America, we receive the most amount of signs. So it's quite a joy to see. And you can tell the difference in the audience over in North America because they're so enthusiastic in terms of the noise that they bring to the show. Like the cheering and the singing is, you know, we, we know that they feel ready for the show because <laughs> they're so loud. But at this time during COVID, we can't actually collect the signs personally, but we do have like laundry basket things. Okay. Magic wiggly, nice laundry baskets. And children will be able to post 
their craft if they bring it to the show if they feel comfortable they could put it in the basket and we can see it later i love that i love that that's wonderful that you, you guys you think of everything so um my children have come to the shows many times i have come to your shows more than my children because i've been <laughs> well out on the road and i I, you know, I equate you guys to the uh, Rolling Stones for little kids. I mean, you put on a quality show. It's great music, great entertainment. I like how you throw in some above their head sarcasm. It's never foul or inappropriate, but it's, you know, there's always a string of entertainment for the adults in the audience. Uh, but one time I brought my kids, you, the Wiggles came to Gainesville and Ginger, I think they were maybe two and four. And because the Wiggles were part of my life with work and their life on the television, I, I thought for certain they would be very comfortable. And we were able to attend the meet and greet before the show. And Anthony came over to say hi. And I had been working, I had done a lot of work with Anthony, as you say, he's a fitness fanatic. And so um, Ginger, it's Mr. Anthony. And she looked at him, she looked at me and she just started licking my arm. Never in her life, but she does that. She does that. What was it expecting? Bizarre. So, what are some of the bizarre things children or their families have done to you, for you, around you? Oh, I mean, mostly it's always positive. Um, it would more be that we would have people come to the shows a lot or they feel that the Wiggly Show is part of their family tradition so they get to come every year and so that's not weird but it's actually lovely and it feels like in a way they feel like our family as well. So seeing the same people in the same city actually cements that city with that family and we remember certain theatres or certain cities with certain people like yourself we remember people that would come religiously to those particular shows and i think for us that's actually lovely and it not it feels even more so when we see the children growing up and they may not come and the parents might still come or they might come back you know when they're 15 and so that kind of nostalgia in terms of childhood is something that um, we see as something quite beautiful. And it does feel like you're seeing like distant cousins um, multiple times over the years, like yourself, but we haven't seen you for ages. But there are lots of families that we would associate in our memory with certain uh, theatres and places. And that's how we remember people. Which is good. I, I can picture people in certain theatres, and when they come to different cities, it's out of context. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, you're the Detroit people. Yeah. Like I, 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 that tends to be bizarre if we see people in different places, and that might be because the two or one year might change slightly, so we might not do every city, and they can't travel to their normal place, and they they spend six hours driving somewhere else, which is the dedication and enthusiasm. It's your morning. <laughs> for people to come to those specific places um, is so beautiful. And then if they travel to another place, it's so bizarre seeing people in different countries. <laughs> and I mean, we've had people that we might've seen in Australia really? and then they might be on holiday in America and we see them at the show, we're like, hang on a minute. Wow. How did you get out here? Yeah. So uh, when I lecture at the University of Florida, so I go in and guest lecture for the college students, um, every semester and it's very cute because I'll play just a little slideshow of my business in the background while I'm talking and no matter what every single time someone always raises their hand one of the college students and says, are those really the wiggles you work with the wiggles wow. my three-year-old gator football player I love the wiggles it's so cute well that, I mean we we start to see that especially Have to pause. I can't wait to see what face she comes back to. She's going to be in some exciting pose when she returns to life. Very excited to see. Oh, <laughs> good choice. Uh, we, I think, 
the most exciting thing about this year is that the Wiggles are turning 30. And I think that is where we see this generational effect over people that have watched the Wiggles for many, many years, whether they are teenagers and now they've grown up or whether they were children before and now they're the parents or now parents to grandparents. And so it is amazing to hear the stories from people, um, either they've come to see the shows or they remember watching the Wiggles. And so that connection to the overall group and the overall uh, legacy of the music is quite amazing. We're hearing more stories now um, about people's experiences with the Wiggles than we've ever had. And also we're lucky in that we're in this information technology era where people can write to us and find their old pictures and tag us and share them and like, oh, look, this is when I met Murray. You know, those kinds of experiences are beautiful and also so nice to be sharing at this time as we commemorate the musical prowess and um, influential nature that the the Wiggles originally had established for the world. So it's lovely. So 30 years, congratulations. I mean, it really is an extraordinary accomplishment to keep going and, and the world keeps making new customers for you all. Mm-hmm. Preschoolers <laughs> always in the horizon. So there's a <laughs> new Wiggle fan born. So out of these, as you guys, as Wiggles going through your history, what um, what things stand out as the most extraordinary accomplishments for your band? Mm, and I, I guess this would be different for every Wiggle and especially for the OG Wiggles and, and the new G Wiggles. But, you know, you hear so many amazing stories from the OG Wiggles, particularly from America, being in the Macy's Day Parade or performing at Madison Square Gardens and being on the Disney Channel, that seems to be such an era of um, highlight uh, for the OGs. And you can see that kind of uh, response and connection from the audience, particularly in North America, when we travel there. So that's something that's not to be um, understated or missed in terms of um, commemorating what the Wiggles were, especially for the audiences of America. Nowadays, it's it's an almost a totally different landscape where Australia and Canada have kind of taken that influential uh, kind of perspective of the Wiggles. It's two markets that we um, tend to see a lot of, we tour a lot of, and so are uh, really hoping to extend that into America as the years go on from here. But for us, I think traveling our own country, Australia, being able to see lots of different places that we would never have had the chance to see. Um, you know, I I wouldn't ever have travelled to Uluru, for example. Um, I don't know if I'd... Uluru? Have, yeah. The, it um, Australia? It's the huge, beautiful rock in the middle of Northern Territory. And it's a landmark of Australia that not all Australians get the opportunity to go to. But we happened to visit it while we were doing shows in Alice Springs and meeting lots of people from the Indigenous community there right in the heart of Alice Springs. And so that for me is one of, it's a really special memory um, of performing with the Wiggles. But, you know, I I do remember, you know, different experiences uh, incite different kind of memories for me. And I think one of the most um, exhilarating kind of uh, shows that we did was in Detroit at the Fox Theatre. And it's a very big um, theatre. It's like maybe 3,000, but it's beautifully ornate and decorated. And I, I, we just came in there and it was just so loud. And the, the joy and the enthusiasm from the audience is just something that we won't ever forget. People just singing along to the songs. And I think for Simon and Lockie and I, one of the most memorable phases of, of uh-oh. It's another opportunity. This is just another opportunity for Emma to come back and surprise us with a great pose. This is going to be the best one yet. I feel it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Sorry. I just wanted to say that one of the most important and significant phases of time for me in particular and and maybe Lockie and Simon is that time that we travelled with the original Wiggles, which is when we met you. It was definitely an entire learning experience 
about trying to introduce us as the new lineup, but also respecting the audience's love for the original Wiggles. And for us, we got to learn from the original Wiggles for that whole year. And it was a very inspiring and educational year for us to learn about how important language and music and the rapport was between the Wiggles and the audience. So that particular time in 2012 um, was life-changing for us. You know, but you know, it's so nice you all are so genuine with your uh, interest in the children and your love of your work. There's no one that's like, I just want to be famous. So I'm going to go be a Wiggle. I, you, there's a genuine appreciation and value for the music that you sing and performances that you give and how they impact the children and family. It's pretty special. And I guess, you know, Simon and Lockie and myself had all been uh, working in a children's entertainment world in some fashion um, prior to joining the Wiggles. And for me, um, I was teaching dance to about three different schools before I joined as in the Wiggles company. And when I when I joined as Fairy Larissa and I was playing a ballet dancing fairy on the Dory Who the Dinosaur Show, I was trying to juggle that and teach dance at the same yeah. time. And so for most of that, like, first um, couple of months, that first year, I was still um, flip-flopping between, um, you know, trying to support myself and teaching, which I was doing for at least five or six years, and then, um, you know, getting to travel with the Wiggles, I was like, this is crazy. This is amazing. How is this happening? And so I think a lot of that training, um, you know, teaching ballet to primary students uh, had been a real, um, it was a great experience for me before I joined the Wiggles. But again, being a Wiggle and doing that has its complete own set of um, experiences and challenges as well. And so I think learning from all the different facets has really come into fruition now. Uh, nine years later, we're approaching um, the performance in such a different way in terms of our own improvements on how we actually connect to children. Um, it feels a lot more natural now than it did before. Well, I guess with every, every job or work field you gotta just put in the time until you get there now you mentioned some of the challenges what's what are the challenges of being a wiggle what's hard oh, about it? <laughs> I'm so sorry. it's weird times this is it emma and the wiggles crying they're really crying, they're really crying. Slip. hang on just one second oh, go on they want Wants to keep track of her to make sure she hasn't escaped. Well, they didn't answer. I think they're just checking to see if I'm asleep. You know what? You might actually be watching this live stream and the message. Maybe. Yes. Maybe. Um, so the hard part about being with them. Mostly. I think the challenge is the traveling uh, when we're on tour. But in the last year, I think our challenges are now more about how do we include everybody in our content and how do we make our content and our shows accessible for everyone around the world if they're listening and watching in different countries and how do we connect with our audiences through a digital platform. And I think that is currently where our headspace is and it's a great place to be because we're receiving this real-time feedback and we know how important it is to make sure that our content is being seen and really it's just scheduling you know we're kind of it's it's the challenge in how do we make sure that we're able to tour record all the albums release the albums make sure the content's on tv tour in that country at that time you know that's really where we where we we have to juggle lots of different things um but we improve it, at it as we go along and we're constantly changing. And are you in on the business side of the Wiggles? Yeah, and I think that's been such an amazing part of the group in that we are so connected and invested, not just in terms of, you know, being a performer on the stage, but in terms of creating the content, actually collaborating together and making sure that the content is reflecting the group that's really important for us. 
What is your favorite Wiggly song? Oh, what's your favorite Wiggly song? That's a good question. Oh, uh, it's a it's a jig, and I can never come up with the um, hoop de doo hoop de doo. Oh, yeah. an absolute classic and a great dancing song, hoop de doo. I do like the glasses song. I've got my glasses on. And it's, it's a new one. I can see clearly now. I've got my glasses on. Oh, it's really cute. Yeah. It's I really love cute. children with glasses. That's oh. like a way to melt my heart in a heartbeat. I don't have my wiggly glasses here, but my other glasses are around. I I, I took them off for this um, interview, but I really should have had them on. <laughs> so the glasses song. And then uh, did you choose being the yellow wind wiggle or was yellow bestowed upon you? Yellow was bestowed, and to be honest, I don't think that it could have been another colour because I feel so connected to yellow. It was my school uniform. I used to be in the yellow sport house in both my schools. I used to have to wear a yellow ribbon on my leotard for ballet exams, which would indicate your height. So you'd go in with four, <laughs> the shortest girl wore pink, then blue, and then yellow, and then white. And so I used to have a little yellow bow on pinned onto my leotard most of the time. It was between blue and yellow. And yellow was my favourite colour. Uh, sorry, yellow was my Nana's favourite colour, and so I think that kind of tripled down. And so when yellow came to me, I was like, that is great. But also I think the colours have really suited each of our personalities, and so it feels very fitting. That's awesome. You know, I was thinking today is how lucky is she that she looks good in yellow because yellow is not very flattering on everybody. That I, where I, I, look, <laughs> I would look really bad in yellow, I think. Um, well, I mean, when I met you, oh, maybe just before, I did have blonde hair. So I was born with very blonde hair and it started to go like strawberry and then kind of more darker blonde as the years went on. And just before I became a wiggle, I was a wiggly dancer and I was like, you know what, I'm going to dye my hair red. And so since then I've been a redhead. And so now I feel like I'm glad that I have have this hair color because I feel that it complements the color <laughs> and I feel like this is this is very me in a very strange way and maybe the blonde is in parts of this yellow too and that's why it feels natural for me to be this color um, but uh, yes you're right different colors suit different complexions different eye colors different personalities if I was uh, given the I said you lucked out because if I was given the opportunity to be a yellow wiggle, I would have said heck yeah, and then I would have looked hideous for the next X amount of years because I don't look good in yellow. But there you are, you're the I, one you're like a one out of three people in the world who can look really good in yellow. No, but let's 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 you know maybe for the future in the next couple of years we might be able to transition into wiggly costumes, whether they're ballet tutors or so so forth, and maybe we can bring lemon, a lemon yellow, into the mix where it's like the uh, the dainty um, yellow pastel um, option, and maybe we can explore different yellows. We'll figure that out, yeah. yeah I mean, now that you're representing the rainbow, I just feel like every colour should be explored. I agree. I agree. So I come from right now, I'm dealing with a lot of women. I say dealing with, I got a lot of friends who also are doing breast cancer and other kind of cancers. And they're, um, I never did a wig. I, I chose to go bald, but my girlfriends are doing some wig stuff. And I know you throw on some wiggly wigs. So what is your wig advice? <laughs> <laughs> the wig advice is, oh, the wig can make you feel so different. It changes your personality sometimes in a positive way. If you, I feel that if I'm wearing different wigs, it's a completely different persona, um, even though this feels very me, even though this is my wig. Um, but the wig to me has become so much a part of me. <laughs> we go to the hairdresser together. <laughs> and they're all styled and so forth. Yeah, and her and I are dyed the same colour. 
And so we, you know, it's like a girlfriend. Like we get to go places together and we see a lot of things together and we travel through a lot of things. But I do have a few weeks now because um, for safety in case I lose one or I did have a slight incident of um, one being near a candle and it singed the back of it. So um, I always have some spares and some are on tour and some are at home and 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 it is easier to have a few um but i've always enjoyed it and it and uh, but you're right it's not for everybody but i think it's a great chance to try now do you ever wear a non wig you ever go to a party as a platinum yeah. one oh yes yeah oh yes <laughs> it's so fun that's i guess that's the excitement about I mean, hair can change everything. And that's why people always say a haircut can be like, you know, a change in you For because sure. it gives you a new energy, a new feeling. Um, but I love a, I love a platinum blonde wig. I've had an opportunity to wear lots of different wigs um, over the last couple of years. And even... Um, in our video for social distancing, the Wiggles video that we did last year for COVID, I've got like a grandma wig on. It's like a blonde gray wig and I've got like a bonnet on and it's one of my favorite dress ups for the Wiggles um, being the grandma wig or this is it's the warden. It is. You get it? You can wait. Really? Yeah. You can wait to check the temperature. Hey. And that, that is important. Once again, if you're just copying it, Emma is in Wiggly Jail, Auckland, New Zealand. They're in quarantine, and it's not that they're just um, allowed to be on their own and be trustworthy. They're actually, there's a warden that checks them and takes the temperature. Probably heard if they on their pajamas or whatever. Sorry. Okay, thank you. You've really had it all, but let's admit the kind of um, COVID safe, you know, this is what's happening at the moment because we are in hotel quarantine and we do have to accept that that's what we're dealing with at the moment. Yeah, there's some weird um, hoops to jump through to get to your point B, which is performing. So, I, yeah, I would stand on my head to get back to a race. I would if a race would come on today, I would have to put on a spacesuit and a grandma wig, and I would do it all to be able to get back to my athletes. I am. I'm gonna send you this picture of the gray wig. It's one of my favorites. Okay, it doesn't sound like it's a sexy wig. Oh, it's very cute. Okay, all right, maybe it is. It's very a cute, cute costume. It's definitely one of my favorite dress ups. All right, well, I can't yeah. wait to see that. So, yeah. um, a rundown of all the wiggles give me give me an update on murray jeff simon a little bit of everybody well luckily actually recently we just did triple j like a version and we got to cover a tame impala song and play all together so we've seen everybody recently Hi. which is great um that was a hugely um exciting project where we got to play an adult song um, dressed as Wiggles and we got to wiggle fire the song a little bit and the response for that has been incredible. So um, we can't wait to hear what other song requests come through <laughs> as the months go on. But uh, Murray's good. Um, he did have heart surgery uh, uh, late last year, so he's just recovering now. He can't lift anything really heavy, but he's doing really well and he's performing back again, which is awesome. It was great to see Murray. Jeff's great. He's just same old Jeff, just going surfing, loving life. That's just Jeff. Anthony is doing well. He's here in quarantine. If you see his Instagram, he's playing lots of banjo and mandolin. I think he's got his bagpipes with him as well. It would be great for everyone in quarantine to hear those bagpipes. <laughs> so I'll see him face to face in a couple of days. Uh, Simon is in quarantine. Um, he's with his baby and his wife, Lauren. And he's here and with you? Yeah. Uh, yes. And really? yeah, the three of them are in, they're in their room together. So they're doing quarantine with a baby, newborn. So they're doing an amazing job, but he looks very placid. Yeah. Ashley looks like he's really, he's doing very well. 
uh, Lockie is in quarantine too. He's been creating um, stop motion with like little turtle toys that he brought in quarantine. So if you look on his Instagram, um, he's been making some little films, but also he's uh, in celebration of the 30th anniversary. He's starting to do some collaborations with friends of his um, around Australia to celebrate the Greatest Hits album by choosing a song off the album and performing it with the guest but then they um, change it, they adapt it and make a different version of the song. And he's just posted his first one with a friend of his called Andy Ball and they sing a version of Wiggle Town and it's very cool. And then what about Patty, Captain Feathersword? Patty, oh, yes. Okay, Patty's hilarious. Patty is uh, in quarantine here as well and he's he obviously loves fitness, as you yes. know. Um, he um, is on his treadmill and he's also um, making people and characters out of the boxes <laughs> in his room. So yeah. when, when he orders food um, and the boxes that they come in, he's been recycling them by creating characters. And uh, this week we were on a, a group Zoom, like a weekly staff Zoom, and he created an entire um, box person and spoke as the box person uh, for the meeting. And you can never, there's never a dull moment with Patty. No, he's so fun. And you know what I, I always think is very charming about him is he's, so, he's larger than life on stage. He really has such a big personality. But I, what I found is when I would come around Patty, he was a little bit shy. He was just a little bit, um, I don't know. He was he was less than his big personality. He's, and he's adorable, too. I don't think people know he's a super hunky guy underneath that pirate costume. He's incredibly fit. And he's always been... Um, very conscious of his health and fitness. And so, yeah, he's exercising every day. Um, he's been updating me um, on his exercise regime. And so, look, it'll be lovely for us to all, um, hopefully at the end of this quarantine, get out and get back into doing shows. So when do you become a free person? When does that happen? Um, it should be on Tuesday. It's Friday, yeah. Next and then um, have, you, have you become better friends with Emma. I mean, I don't know if I could be stuck inside for 14 days. I don't like me. Yoga. Yoga. Huh? Yoga. yoga. It's, been, it's been so good because you can, you're not distracted by anybody else in the class. Oh, boy. That was quick. <laughs> that was, all right. So you go to New Zealand and, and you have 25 shows. Are they sold then, out now? Most of them are. It's going to be one of our biggest tours of New Zealand ever. And last time we were here, which was two years ago, it was a huge tour. But this seems to be something really special. You're still there. You're still there. <laughs> uh, it's a special tour in the fact that it feels like... You're still there. You're still, I got you. Okay, maybe maybe you're just freezing up my head. Oh, I'm freezing for you now. Okay. <laughs> this tour is, it feels like the most anticipated because we haven't toured. It feels like it will be the, our biggest New Zealand tour. And last time it was an amazing tour and we could feel the love from people in the audience. And so that's something that is special for us here in New Zealand. It's definitely the people connection, like it is in every country, but it's lovely to be here. And I think because of the anticipation and us waiting to have our first tour after this COVID pandemic, um, you know, we're already getting messages from families where people are like, we're so excited you're in the country. We can't wait to see you. We're going to see you next week. Oh, my gosh, we haven't been to a show for so long. So there's a lot of different anticipations being in a public space, being at a live performance and seeing the Wiggles, you know, there's a few different kinds of aspects to this tour, I think, for people. So, um, look, we're so uh, thrilled to be in the position. Uh, that ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, facility manager again. Again. Uh, just been again. Out a quick walk and a quick puff. Uh, and now back in their rooms. Uh, we've got the 
best coach of about four coaches. You're so uh, lucky. Alive. It's so great. You're so uh, That's twice in an hour. <laughs> Two phone calls and knock at the door. People <laughs> don't think the life of a wiggle is glamorous. They are now going like they first class feel like I'm so happy for you. And I just get through this uh, arrival as quickly as we can. This is, I, I tried to explain this to my mum. He's, he's, he's done his second moment. I tried to explain this. She's like, oh, you know, is it really quiet? I'm like, no, it's not quiet. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is very, um, he will be the next personality of New Zealand. Oh. I can sense this. Um, he's taken on the feedback from current uh, people. That are staying in the hotel he's listened to the feedback he's adjusted his microphone technique and today he's given us three speeches and two have been within your presentation outstanding he might he perhaps he might be the the opening act for you all i mean there's a lot of ways you could go here but i bet he might be for hire i'm happy for him yeah, yeah this is very exciting tell him when you hear, when you interact with him, that people all around the world now have heard his incredible prison warden announcements, and we're <laughs> we can't wait. He's very pragmatic, but he's got a bit of personality in there. Like sometimes he gives a, a joke or two. Um, we haven't had that this morning, but um, it's well, he tries to give us our, the feedback um, joke. But look, I'm happy. So Emma, I am so grateful you were free for me. Well, technically, I was free. Um, we just had a few uh, hotel quarantine interruptions. Yeah, no, I'm so grateful. I reached out to your PR guy and I said, listen, I know the Wiggles are bored. <laughs> Give me a wiggle. <laughs> I said, Emma's free and I went, yay! <laughs> Look, it's just yoga and then fitness. Yoga and fitness. What more could you ask for? It's all worth it, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, I, I'm thrilled that we got a chance to catch up and happy anniversary to you and um, all of our Wiggly friends. You really have brought such joy to my life, all of our lives, and I, I'm so grateful for you. So I, I really appreciate it. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, probably the excitement is that we've been filming a new Wiggly TV series called Ready, Steady, Wiggle 3. And we've recreated the Wiggly world as you may have seen it 20 years ago. So we've got the Wiggly house, Dorothy's garden, the beach, captain's ship. And so I think this is going to be really fun, especially in terms of nostalgia. If people remember what that Wiggly world was, they'll, they'll be very interested in to see how we've recreated it for the new generation. So look, hang out there because there's new content coming. And uh, we're starting to put more videos up on our YouTube channel in the meantime. So enjoy, enjoy, oh, enjoy. I'm going to look out because I'm I'm specifically a fan of Flora Door. Yeah, she's there. <laughs> she's there. Thank you. Thank goodness for the door. I don't know why, but the door <laughs> always she's stuck with me. Come back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh, someone asked. It's right here. Can you sing us a song? Do you have any bars of a song? Oh, what song would you like to sing? Please? Me? Yeah. I would probably ask for Hoop Dee Doo. I, I'm accustomed to maybe Mer. Oh, you need you intro, but Hoop Dee Doo, Hoop Dee Doo. And then my trouble, and then the troubles are through. <laughs> Hoop Dee Doo, Hoop Dee Doo. <laughs> That was perfect. That was perfect. All right, beautiful girl. I love you. Where can people find the Wiggles right now? Where are you guys on social media? Social media at the Wiggles or at any of the individual Wiggles on Instagram. So at Emma Wiggle, at Anthony Wiggle, at Lucky Wiggle, at Simon Wiggle. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, but all of our new content is coming on YouTube and we've been putting together some new compilation videos. So head to the Wiggles on YouTube. All right. With that, I will let you go. Thank you so much, Emma. Send all my love to all the guys. I will. They'll be very thrilled to uh, see you and I'm sure they're sending their love back.
Thank you. And don't forget, I, I, I want my opportunity back as Dorothy the Dinosaur one day. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that. <laughs> right, <to> Anthony. <laughs> I will. I will. That, well, I need you to pull the strings. <laughs> Not a problem. Okay. Thanks, Emma. Thank and bye, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye to the prison warden. <laughs>